and welcome to the Cinema Bees podcast. I'm Monica. And I'm Tyler. And we are coming to you with a review fresh out of the theater for Spiderway. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping that in. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> for Spider-Man No Way Home. I will never Spider ever be able, no to, way. <laughs> I will never be able to get this title right for some reason. <laughs> That's enough. I don't know why? But yes, we're finally back um, after an extended break. As Monica had other work priorities, she went to Vegas. I did go to Las Vegas. It yeah. was a good time. Um, but, but we didn't see any movies. So, And it's also unfortunate because we missed multiple movies that we wanted to I watch. Know. I wanted to see... Um, House of Gucci was your top. House of Gucci. I wanted to see it very badly. And I, I wanted to see... Um, oh my god... I know Ghostbusters came out, but that wasn't the one that you were excited for. Oh, West Side Story, duh. West Side Story. I kept wanting Story. to call it Maria, because that's the name of the girl. And I was like, that's oh, not the name. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, who is Maria? I've never seen anything of West Side Story, so I have no idea. Tisk tisk. We'll see West Side Story eventually. I feel bad, though, because I feel like I'm like contributing it to it absolutely bombing. <laughs> but yeah. I don't think our two tickets would have made too much of a difference. Yeah, too. exactly. But yeah, so um, I know monica so before we get into the movie we got to talk about trailers like we normally do i know monica doesn't have a trailer i just really want to talk about the iconic nicole kidman amc tra- um, introduction oh my God. honestly i it's why'd you do this why'd you bring it up <laughs> hey do you want an ad for for movie theaters when you're in a movie theater <laughs> go to the movies <laughs> i'm here i'm, I'm from prom present <laughs> if you would stop talking i could watch the movie <laughs> and it's like i wish they would just do it before the trailers but it's like you're ready for the movie to start and there's freaking nicole <laughs> she, no, she, she comes out and she's just a dazzling screen and i'm like oh my god and right. transport Support us to new world. <laughs> like, oh my god, it's the worst every time. It gets, I hope yeah. it gets cut, and it never gets cut. Mm-hmm. Like every time, I'm like, "All right, this is the one. This is the one." And then I'm just, I just see her face, and I'm like, "I hate you." <laughs> I know, I and mean, it's making. I think, I think it's turning America against Nicole Kidman. So <laughs> this one thing nicole kidman can never recover from yeah i just wanted to bring that up and uh, say if you go it's to the essentially AMCs, a trailer yeah. if you go to amc's you're tired of this yeah if you go often i mean I, i've seen it on tv before that's what people are saying but it makes sense on, on TV. tv it does yeah Why, i don't need a, an amc ad an amc yeah exactly. you aren't even selling like stuff that i could buy yeah you're just selling oh go to the movies oh, i'm at the movies i like i'm the one at the movies tell the others <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Anyway, that's all. None of the other trailers really looked like that interesting to me. The, the, so the trailer that I had, most of the trailers I had seen before, there was one for Dog, which I had never <gasps> oh, seen. Oh, that looks so good. I just loved how it was only called Dog. Yeah, that was kind of weird. <laughs> that was just funny. But no, I, I am excited for that one. Um, Who is that? Channing Tatum. Right. I couldn't remember. For some, oh, my God. For some reason, I was thinking of someone else, but I can't. Oh, my God. The Magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing i know him, uh, the thing i mainly know him from is um 21 and 22 drum street oh, those are good movies um, he's in like Ste- step up i think he's in that dance movie mm. yeah but the movie i wanted to talk about was um or the trailer i wanted to talk about was sonic 2 sonic I, the hedgehog 2 i wait have you ever seen the first i one? never saw sonic the hedgehog i just one. realized no. that is it good yeah it's freaking amazing it's the best it's the best video game movie that's been made because all Until the other ones suck mario featuring chris pratt comes out <laughs> <laughs> Woo! chris pratt taking over the animated world did you hear that he's doing the animated grinch for abc this year he's voicing grinch First of all, how many Grinch movies do we need to make? That is absolutely absurd. The 2018 one is flawless. I just watched it the other it's day. So, good. so we don't need to do Grinch anymore. That's what I'm saying. Like, they truly need to make another Grinch, and he doesn't need to voice, like, every major character ever in Mario, animation. Garfield, Grinch. He's taken over everyone. Like, we don't, like, I get he has a standard white guy voice and can do comedy, but jeez. All right, guys, I'm sorry to inform you, but the entire cast of the Mario movie has been cut, and now Chris Pratt is voicing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a me, Mario. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't. I'm excited for that just to see how off it's going to sound because they told him they they told everyone that, that he's not doing an Italian accent. He's just Chris Pratt essentially. I think that I think they're going to do a good job with it. Like I do think it's going to they're going to like really play with the universe, but I do think it's going to be different than what 
you would yeah. expect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, but, but do you think the Sonic Hedgehog two looks good? Yes, I do. I think it's very, very nice that they're um, going more. They're leaning more into Sonic, like the games of Sonic, because the other move, the first movie was very much just Sonic is in the Our real world. world. Yeah, and this one is definitely going into like they have the Chaos Emeralds, which are from the game. They have Tails. They have Knuckles. Like I they didn't have see Tails. Things. I was looking for him. Yeah. He, how did you not see Tails? I'm not been paying attention. Yeah, apparently not, because they literally show Tail coming out of a portal, and then he's like, "Who?" Uh, Sonic's like, who are you? I'm Tails. Like, this is a major I point. I didn't see that. I only saw the red guy. Oh. <laughs> then you missed an entire yeah, portion of the, the trailer. Portion. Yeah. I don't know what you were doing. I might have when Tommy was getting a drink, and I was getting it from him. Mm. But, you yeah, know, I'm excited for that one, just because the first one was really good, and I, I actually enjoyed it a lot. I like that. It also seems like they're leaning into like the cheesiness of it all, yes. and I think that's I think that's more fun for the audience than when like you're trying to be too serious. And it's like, listen, let's just bring Jim Carrey back and give him a bigger mustache. Yes, <laughs> like, <laughs> he's now pure Eggman. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just glad that they took the criticism that it got originally when the original design came out. You remember that, right? The teeth. <laughs> the teeth. Why was he human? <laughs> and they just were like, "All right, guys, we we heard you, and now everything like they're not going to make that same mistake again." So it's. Nice to know that they are going in the right direction with I don't understand stuff. how they messed that up so badly. I mean, I, like, who... How many people approved that character design? Like, seriously. All you had to do was take the literal character they made and they're like, should we add teeth? <laughs> like, it's not even, like... It's not even the fact that the Sonic doesn't look like Sonic. It's the fact that it looks horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> she just looked at a Every picture. time I see a picture, I just Googled Sonic how teeth. How do you see that? How do you see that and be side like... Side by side, it's like... Yeah, I would exactly. Do, yeah. Why did you ever think that, regardless if it's Sonic, that's terrifying. That's not a cute animated hero. Like, it just doesn't make sense. I don't understand. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, we didn't really need to... Ha he didn't have to look like... I think they were trying to make him look like a realistic hedgehog. Yeah. And it's like, listen... <laughs> that's not what we're here for. I mean, I get that you're going into humans, like, human world now, but in the games... I know you probably don't know this because you don't play Sonic, mm -hmm. but in the games, there's games where he's interacting with humans, like, actual humans. Oh, And I it looks that. super funny, but that's the cheesiness of it. Like, it just looks totally wrong. I would always just play like level one where I, and then it, Sonic I feel like is really hard. Yeah. So I would just like play level one where you like roll down the hills and be like, all right, <laughs> <Yay. let's play laughs> Mario. <laughs> time to switch over. But yeah, um, that's, that's basically all I have to say about Sonic 2. There weren't like many like new trailers that I was excited for. Uh, is Matrix is not out yet, right? But we it comes out Christmas. We did not see a trailer for Matrix. Thank God, because I was tired of it. Yeah, same. But I was just surprised by that. I yeah. usually, I would have thought it would have been in here, but that's all for trailers so i guess now we get into movie time and we discussed this beforehand but it's very hard to talk about this movie without going into spoilers because i know i personally don't like any spoilers going into a movie i usually don't watch the last trailer that they put out i usually try to avoid it for like the week beforehand of any like news so uh, we won't spoil anything we'll talk about like maybe like what was in or we probably won't even do a synopsis because yeah. i don't, I don't want to say anything no we're just going to tell you whether we liked it whether it's buzzworthy and then we're going to get into our spoiler discussion so that way you don't have to i feel like most people that are listening to this have already seen it like most people are not looking for this content if they've already seen the movie so let's just talk about whether it's buzzworthy or not so um let's give it a let's give it a rating and then say all right put it our ranking in the ncu and then um we will discuss our um buzzwatery so tyler what do you rate it out of 10 Ooh, that's a hard one um i'm going to have to go with 9.5 mm -hmm. because the other movie that i ranked 9.5 this year and i would put this above that because the other 9.5 was shang chi and I put this above Shang Chi. Really? Yeah, so, I can see that. Um, I would give this a nine. You would I give agree. it a nine. Mm -hmm. I know. I kind of feel like off giving it a nine point five because there are things that I wasn't like. I was super... gonna say this one will be interesting. That maybe if we come back to it in a week or two, I wonder yes. if like the after the thrill wears off. Um, the one thing I will say, and this is not a spoiler um at all, but um, seeing it in a theater. Oh this my is, god! Like what seeing movies in theaters is about. And if you were in theaters seeing Endgame, 
this is the same. It was so fun. I mean, feeding up, you really is a difference. You can feed off people's energy in the crowd. And it was just so fun. Every, people were cool. cheering, crying, laughing. It was so cool going into the theater and seeing people wearing like, like Spider Man stuff. Uh, like I'm you. currently <laughs> wearing, like, so uh, two years ago, I made my halloween costume and it was homemade spider-man from spider-man homecoming and i so i still have all this stuff so to so today i styled my outfit to ha- have the jacket that he wears like the sleeveless Excellent. jacket yep. so i walked in i was just wearing all spider-man stuff and everyone like, was wearing spider-man stuff. yeah like i was it was packed at the theater oh and yeah it hasn't been packed at a theater for a while i mean i think they said it already made 50 million and just thursday alone it's insane like that's nuts and yeah so it was anyway, just nice going um, to the theater i mean i guess they're not it's only in theaters right yes but anyway i definitely anyway as i say that i highly recommend the theater experience yeah 100 um, percent. you should definitely go see this in theater instead of waiting for it it's it's very much worth it to see yeah. with so many people i agree and i think i think the theaters are going to be busy for like i think these are going to be full yeah. theaters for a while so if you want to go see it in theaters i highly highly recommend what do you rate it um my, never, oh yeah you said i nine. said nine hmm. yeah come on i'm listen. forgetful i'm sorry you gotta listen my brain's been white so in regards to ranking of mcu because we if you listen two episodes ago we did our mcu ranking okay. and um i mine's high i don't okay. know if yours well, mine's high so what's yours? mine is four Okay, so what's above? I was Remind on, me the top five. Give the order. I originally thought it was going to be three, but mm-hmm. my top is Infinity War, Guardians, Endgame, No Way Home, Avengers. Okay. And then Shang-Chi, because Shang-Chi was five. Mine is... So, Spider-Man is five. Or No Way Home is five. Got so it. So, it's... Um, number one's Guardians. Number two, Infinity War. Number three, Endgame. Number four, Avengers. Number five, No Way Home. Wow. And then number six is homecoming right 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 right. so so you put this below avengers and i put it above Avengers. yeah that's mm-hmm. our differing mm-hmm. but avengers is higher up on my list than yours oh wait no it's not no it's the same mm. our one and two are swapped I but think... our our four is the same yeah our i have one, yeah i have reasons for it so we'll discuss yeah it, but... i also have reasons for it i i just think the hype around endgame was more wait I, I don't know i feel like i I was pretty even. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But yeah. So we'll guess. Uh, oh, yeah. Is it buzzworthy? Of course it is. It is Come 110,000 percent. Loud buzzes here. Yeah. It's buzzing all around town. No, it's like it's definitely the movie to see right now. There's no other movie to see right now unless you no. have already seen it. And if you've already seen it. Maybe go watch it again. <laughs> Honestly, I know people like in that group. I've know I've know people I've seen that have already seen it three times, and it just came out like last night. Like people are seeing it over and over again. I feel like there's people in our theaters that had already seen it. I agree. Because the way they were like anticipate anticipatory yeah. reacting. Yeah, a hundred percent. I was definitely getting that vibe, and I would go see it again if I had the time. Anyway, um, do you want to get into spoilers? Yeah. So we'll get into spoilers, and this is like giant spoiler territory like this yeah. is probably like the movie besides endgame where i was most worried about spoilers i yeah i got spoiled for something and it's i got we'll spoiled for something it. as well okay we'll get into it so we are about to begin spoilers so anything after this point will reveal major details in the movie so this is just a warning if you have not already seen it so yeah, we're about to get into it leave so now we will get into spoilers what did you get spoiled for in advance um so a mo- about a month or two ago maybe a month and a half oh. the first leaks of this movie were coming out and in the leaks were was a picture of um matt murdoch at and you know who matt murdoch is right no me casually looking at my imdb okay. no sorry matt murdoch is daredevil oh and if and it, oh you, the crowd went so crazy be- when he came on because he's in a netflix show Mm -hmm. And so that previously wasn't canon. And so Matt Murdock just shows up. And I had thought about that. I had thought about that. Like when when they were in the movie and they were like, you need a lawyer. I was like, Matt Murdock. I know where this is going. (laughs) No, but the leak had a picture of him at the table with Happy May and Peter. And so um, once that happened. Why are people leaking that? It's so annoying. I know. It's because they want to be like the first. Yeah, 100%. For the clout. Yeah, exactly. And then 
when that came out along with that there were other images that came out and the other one of them image, you could see like andrew garfield one of them yeah. was all three of them <sighs> it was all three of them in the railing so you could see the railing behind them for, from the s- statue yeah. from the statue of liberty mm-hmm. and so people like analyzed the crap out of it yeah once the trailer came out they found that the bookcases that were behind matt murdoch can be seen in like one shot of the trailer so they were like oh my god they have the set right so this might actually be a legit leak then there's this really tiny yellow like padding on one of the one of the rails and that's how people matched it up with i saw i saw that part yeah so that's how i basically knew it so once matt murdoch showed up i was like yes we're getting all three of them which was almost that's the thing is like pretty much everyone knew we were getting all three of them but i didn't really want it directly spoiled but I'm so not because I saw it on Twitter today, this morning. Ooh. I like just got on Twitter and my Twitter feed's all like Big Brother. So yeah. I just wasn't expecting anything. And this one freaking Big Brother Twitter person was like, oh, like, um, she basically just said, like, it was so cool to see, um, or she said, I didn't really know much about Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire, so I didn't really know, understand those parts. And oh I, my, everyone replied oh to her, like, God. what are you thinking? Seriously. Like, and she was like, well, I thought everyone knew that. And it's like, it's fine. Everyone knew it was coming. Honestly, I feel like that's, like, the least thing to get. It's like, yeah. I, I didn't get spoiled about plot points, necessarily. 100%. Like, if I would have gotten spoiled about some of the things that happened, yes, I would have been living. But I haven't seen those. Yeah, exactly. The um, other thing that came out is when the one of when the trailer came out that was revealing all the villains that were going to be in this movie in the brazilian version of the trailer you see lizard get absolutely punched by thin air Mm. so obviously someone was cut out and so everyone was like okay so andrew garfield (laughs) kicks him yeah so everyone knew at that point they were like someone's there yeah and then people were trying to like explain it well it was like it could be them hiding that doc ock is a hero at this point or something but it was just like all right we know all three of them are gonna be there so at that point i was just like i don't care i was getting hype just having a good time yeah Yeah, (laughs) i was getting hype i was but no the i was so glad that none of the plot details were leaked me too because the plot like genuinely shocked me because of how they portrayed it in the trailers like made you think other things going into the movie yeah i was gonna say i think they did a really good job misleading in the trailers i also think i saw I, the other thing i saw this isn't really a spoiler but i saw like tom holland and zendaya doing interviews and they were just then they were saying like the things that happen in this movie like it's actually like really dark and like mm-hmm. it's some of like the hardest stuff to watch from the mcu and i was like what do they mean like, who, who gonna die basically and i saw a tiktok that where a guy was analyzing the trailer and he was guessing what was gonna happen and i really believed him and he was wrong oh really yeah he said that he thought ned and happy were gonna die oh. and based on the trailer analyz- analysis I, I i thought maybe happy would die because mm-hmm. all the things that were being pointed at him right yeah mm-hmm. so i guess they didn't intentionally but yeah um, anyway um Let's get into, like, kind of what we liked about the plot, where I guess I'm going to quickly jump into something I disliked in general. I feel like that's made me do it under Avengers. Two things. First of all, I think Avengers, as we discussed in our ranking, is a standalone movie that anyone can enjoy without having been involved in the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. This is, you will not, absolutely not enjoy this at all. If you have not seen it. You have to know at least general knowledge. I mean, okay, I am going to reveal something, guys, all right? I have never seen the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. Wait, what? You've never <laughs> seen? Never seen. Oh them. my god, I didn't know that. I have never seen them. I know a lot about them just from like being like in, watching TikToks wow. and stuff. So I will say, I don't think you have to have seen everything. But if you don't have a general knowledge of the MCU Seriously. and the world and how it works, you are not going to like this movie. There at is all. so much that because the runtime is already two hours 37 minutes there is so much that they cannot just like they can not not explain the time time on this because like the first uh character the first character from another universe that shows up is doctor is doc ock and then he's talking about where's my machine and all this stuff you never get explained what the machine is yeah you never get that explained exactly. or you never explain it's never explained what happens exactly in his world you never get that for any world you get it for Electro, maybe, but, like, Lizard. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I know you probably know, but, like, do you know why the Lizard became the Lizard? All I know is that he fell into a... a no, the that's, eels. It's, that's no, not true? that's not Lizard. Oh. That's Electro. Oh. That's Jamie Foxx. Oh. Lizard is the actual Lizard. No, I don't dude. know about Lizard, because so, I've never seen him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's where, that's where I'm it's I'm a fake false. fan. Everyone's that's where about falls. to roast me. <laughs> the Lizard 
um, in The Amazing Spider-Man 1, this is the first movie, the lizard is this dude. I don't remember his name. Um, uh, they say his name a lot, yeah. but I can't think of it. Basically, he has a deformity where he doesn't have an arm. Or he doesn't. He has like a uh, like a half an arm or something. Mm-hmm. So his entire thing is that throughout the movie, he's trying to find a cure. And lizards can regenerate their and limbs. lizards can regenerate their limbs. So he used re- reptile like or mm-hmm. lizard DNA, and basically it morphed him into a lizard. And that's where you get that one line where he's like, "I know if you try to fix things, it always ends up bad." But you would have no idea. Why? Like you would know. You wouldn't know. I that. didn't know. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I still enjoyed it because I have seen every other MC movie, and I've seen all. I love, love, love the Tobey Maguire yeah. ones. But like you know, even that, even just that little lack of knowledge took me away out of the movie. So like, you and know, if you had discussed the lizard, you were just confused about. And even like, for example, Tommy, he was like, I don't know if this one looks that good because I don't really like Doctor Strange, and I'm afraid it's going to be like all about Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like you can still enjoy without the Doctor Strange stuff, but still, Doctor like, Strange if you, was really good. Oh, he was so good in this, but even without Doctor Strange knowledge, you could still enjoy this. But um, it's still a big part of it. like you have to understand the way his the way his world yeah. works, the way his magic works. Hundred percent. If I had not seen Doctor, I just watched it a couple yeah, weeks ago exactly. before our ranking. I wouldn't have understood. I'd have been like, why are well, they upside what is down? The mirror? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. wouldn't know what the mirror realm is. You exactly. also wouldn't know that he needs the rings. Yep, he needs the ring mm-hmm. for his power. Mm-hmm. Like, also, why is Ned magic? That's, that I kind of odd. love it. <laughs> I, I think it was funny. Love that for him. But yeah, no, I was just like, that's an odd convenience for plot. I mean, everything. Is an, you can't get into that too much because everything is a convenience for plot. Everything in MCU yeah. is convenient. Yeah. No, but no, but yeah, like there's just like gaps that they leave out that are crucial. I mean, even the Norman, even the um, Green Goblin stuff, if you've never seen it. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's, it's almost a disservice because what happens at the end of this movie is so vital Mm -hmm. for the rest of the mcu but if you've never seen the other ones other spider-man you will you like will be at a loss the entire movie so basically it's there's no point in seeing it and just look up the ending yeah that's what i'm saying is i think that's the one my only complaint is like this i will say i've heard people say this is a love this is a love letter to the fans and avengers is just like a let's have a good time and this is like a if you are a fan you will like this i i do agree my only other complaint with this movie was the first like 45 minutes to an hour were a bit slow for me yeah. i was just kind of like I'm, let's the let's, thing is, let's get is into, i was like where is toby <laughs> i was i was like for the first part i was just like kind of like waiting for it to branch off from the trailer because Mm -hmm. if you've seen the trailer Mm -hmm. you don't know the plot but you know where it's going yeah you know like where it's leading to and so at the end i was just like okay so this is the final battle i thought it was going to be some other final battle right i thought it was going to be the sinister six sinister six is a spider-man like trope where basically six villains get together and basically like just to kill spider-man oh and so i thought that's where it was going because a lot of people said there's a bunch of villains in this it's easy for them to do a multiversal sinister six and it doesn't go there and so i was like oh so the sandman lizard electro fight is the ending yeah i was just like that's not like the most interesting and then the green goblin fight was lame but it it wasn't supposed to be like a big fight. Yeah, I got it. I felt the same way. I was like, I this think is it's all. Also, we get. I think it's also because Willem Dafoe is a little bit older. He probably can't do a lot yeah, more. Yeah, but can we talk about how he? I just think he is so amazing, yeah. and I think that um, one of the movies we should watch eventually is The Lighthouse. It's him and Robert. And Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. It's supposed to be like the best A twenty four film. Exactly. I've been wanting to watch it Me for too. so long. We'll watch that soon. Um, but no, he's great. I mean, really, a lot of the people are great in this, besides Tobey Maguire. Listen, I don't. I disagree. I think his character is supposed to be awkward. He is like the awkward weirdo dude. Yes. And but like. I don't know. There's like parts where like you and can Andrew s- Garfield's like the tortured, like dreamy Peter Parker and. Um, yeah. Tom Holland is like the kid. I think, and I think that Peter Parker 
Peter Parker. Well, that's specific <laughs> here. <laughs> no, I think that Toby. Which one? <laughs> Peter one, Peter two, Peter three. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> There's so many funny parts in this. But no, I think Toby Maguire. I think it shows how his his Peter Parker would age and mature because he's the oldest out of yeah. all of them. So it would show how his Peter Parker would age and mature and just be kind of like a like a youth pastor. <laughs> well, that was funny. It kind of reminded that. me of how they like started to go with Peter Parker from um, Into the Spider Verse. You know yeah. how he was like mm-hmm. super old, like yes. he, like he was like, uh, like being lazy, like he lost Mary Jane. It kind of yes. reminded me of that. They me were trying too. to like make him like the super weathered guy. Yeah, and I kind of liked that Andrew Garfield was still older, mm-hmm. but he was like very much like I am. Like this is like awful for me. <laughs> yeah, it was very, it was very cool how they still kept each Peter Parker the same, but advanced on like how much they actually got to show right because you don't really get to show the aftermath of a previous movie that's what's so cool about it yeah yeah you get you get moments where like the all the moments with andrew garfield like he's acting his heart out because he's he's like yeah i still have yet to watch tick tick boom i'm gonna watch it don't worry so good he (laughs) does amazing in it it was actually funny because i was kind of feeling like I was like aligning those two characters yeah. and I was like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, hmm, how is this, how does this work? Right. How is this canon to the Tick, Tick, Boom universe? <laughs> yeah, no, that's how I felt. <laughs> but, but like he was like very much acted out like how he was just tortured by like what he had done and what mm-hmm. had happened in his world, which I loved. Yeah, and that's what made the moment really cool when he and see even even though I haven't seen the Andrew Garfield Spider Man, I still felt like this moment was powerful just because like I generally understood what was happening when he rescues MJ. Yeah, like the whole crowd like burst into applause and cheering. It was yeah, so cool. It was but so cool. It was really it was that part was really touching. And he's like he's just he's probably the strongest actor, even stronger than Tom Holland in my uh, opinion. Yeah, I don't. I think that him and Tom Holland are even, but I also haven't seen like I think. Tom Holland tends to overplay the innocence Ooh, that's factor of Peter. Like he's always just been like, "I'm just a wee boy," and I'm like, "It's like <laughs> I'm just a wee little lad who loves berries and cream." <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like sometimes he's like overcompensating for the fact that he's getting significantly older than his character, and so he's like trying to act too much I like a kid. That. I hope that makes sense. I can see that. Versus like um, Zendaya, who's just like really good. Um, yeah, Zendaya is freaking amazing in this movie. Yeah, she's really good. I think I think her MJ is the most likable of all of them. I um, agree. Yeah, I agree. Because um, um, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're just gonna go back and forth. Say I agree, I agree, I agree with I agree. with with our own comments. Um, I know we talk we're talking about Andrew Garfield and and Tobey Maguire, but we like can we just talk about how perfect the reveal was? Oh my gosh, that was such a clever way I, of doing it. I do think it was a clever, but I wish. That Tobey Maguire had been first. I thought the same thing. I, I but I don't I don't know why they did it the way that they did it. But I feel I like that they, I feel like they couldn't have played the jokiness of Andrew Garfield because I think they wanted that to be first. That way he could joke and like. Then be that's more what I was it. gonna say. I also think that Andrew Garfield's um like his spider his peter parker character arc is more relevant to this movie and yeah, exactly. his character is more driving for this movie than Tobey Maguire's character is so i think that's why they needed to do that i do think it's amusing how they purposely made him peter parker number three and uh, like as like a joke like yeah like he's the last, he's the last. <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> uh, that was funny i also i i was worried i was like when they sh- first showed andrew garfield and then he was in it and he was like having like a whole like three minute scene just by himself with the people mm-hmm. i was like are they not going to reveal toby Maguire right now yeah i was I like agree. that's dumb and then they revealed him i was like okay that makes sense no they i was gonna say because I, I was also wondering like how are they gonna get into this universe and they were finding all the villains i was like hope they don't just like find them in the trees <laughs> like, but I, I thought that was a good way to do it um but no like just the reveal of him being like i want like where is peter parker and then like he opens the portal and then everyone's like oh hey there he is and then he turns around and you can see his eyes yeah and his eyes are so vividly different than mm-hmm. the rest and that also might be another reason why they did it because his eyes his eyes are more iconic that's than a really Sam good point Ra- th- that's than a really Tommy good point. and so like literally he turned around and and then i was like wait a second and then they should cut back to him and i was like oh my god it's him he's finally here everyone cheered so loud it was so crazy it was awesome yeah it was so much fun it really was um but but yeah i definitely agree with your complaints about 
like i just felt it was a little bit slow at the beginning yeah Yeah. and i also like i I can definitely see how it was slow at the beginning i also felt like the last battle wasn't that good it was cool to see them work together but there wasn't like i feel like if it would have gone any longer it would have been bad but also i just feel like there wasn't that many inventive uses of three spider-men i see what you mean there because there's so much potential I see what you mean there. As someone who thinks the action is the least interesting part of the Marvel movies, I felt that it was a perfect amount of time, and we got just enough shots of them being all together, which I think some of those were the most powerful shots of Bro, like, the whole movie. like them three on the, on the statues, like uh, the top like crown thing yeah. was so cool. And when they did the pose, yeah. <laughs> um, I was, <laughs> it reminded me of a Black Widow, like Florence Pugh, like those oh, posers. Yeah. But, they, but um, that was really cool. I was like, that would be a good like wallpaper. <laughs> Honestly, I was, was thinking so, the same thing. It was so cool. And like, I think they got enough shots of that. And like, I think the action was like enough to have some cool fighting scenes, but then like get the job done. I thought that was cool. I think, th- I think they did themselves a disservice by not having them quip to each other more more because mm-hmm. i feel like they're all like they're all sp- they're all peter parker they're all funny you should have them interact more besides like the thing that i was like having trouble with is that the only times that they really interact is when they're not fighting because there's a mm, the mcu and, Aven- and avengers movies they do a really good job of, at interacting and having these conversations yeah. and quips while they're fighting yeah but this doesn't have it like i mean like like Avengers 1, Iron Man, when he's like yeah. going around the corner, he's like, I'm bringing the party to you. And then they're all like talking about it. Yeah. There's nothing like this. The action just stops. And then two Spider-Men are talking and then they go uh, go their separate ways. That's a good point, actually. I agree there. Um, but I do think that the scenes where they were, I think those were some of the best scenes when yeah. all three Spider-Men 100%. were talking. Um, and you can tell that all three of them were just having fun. They, you acting. can tell they love like that th- those roles and they yeah. love doing that job. They're like, I'm so happy, to, like we're actually doing this, guys. I was like really disappointed. Oh, first of all, I wanted you to get me a refresher. Why is there no Uncle Ben in this movie? Was there a reason for that, or they just, they just made Aunt May single lady for just a good time? They just never. M- Never addressed it. They didn't want to do another origin story of Spider-Man. They didn't want to make, like, Mm -hmm. they didn't want to make Homecoming, because they introduced him in Civil War. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to make Homecoming a prequel and make it uh, an origin story, because you've already seen it. So they just skipped Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben still exists in this universe, because he has a suitcase, I think, in Far From Home, and it has Uncle Ben's name on it. But... I think they just knew that everyone knew the origin story. And the difference, the thing that is, is that they're making a new animated series, which is MCU canon, which is called Spider-Man Freshman Year, which goes into the origin story of Spider-Man oh, in this Oh, is Tom universe. Holland in it? Uh, or is it animated? It's animated. I don't know if he's voicing it because in What If, he was Spider-Man was voiced by a different character, by a different person. That's probably what's going to happen then. Yeah. But no, so they're actually going into it, but they just decided not to do a, an Uncle Ben That's thing. fine. I was just curious. But anyway, I was, I was like pretty devastated when Aunt May died. But yeah. I really liked how they used that to have all three Spider Men like connect. And yeah. I thought I thought that was like really cool. Yeah, I was I was very glad of, like just all the sad moments they did super well. And they gave and enough they felt time necessary. And they gave enough time for Tom Holland to just be like, I am sad. Yeah. Because I was worried that it was gonna be like, Oh, Tom Holland just gets right back into the swing of things. But he's not like he's devastated until the other Spider Men show up, which I yeah. think is a good it was a good way of doing it. And he's still devastated by the end. Like, he's freaking beating up Green Goblin about to kill him. Yeah. And I thought that was a good arc for him because we finally got the with great power comes great responsibility. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad. I was like, kind of sad that Tobey Maguire didn't say it. He just looked at him. But I was like, that kind of feels more right because it's like it would be forced at that point. Yeah. I, I'm glad they just let it be May's thing and that's it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I do think overall they um, really incorporated like all aspects of the movie that they needed to without doing too much or spending too much time on anything. Like I feel like they spent an adequate amount of time on everything, um, and they gave, like you said, they gave him a lot of time to sit with the sad moments, a lot of time to um, laugh at the funny dialogue. I think they like mm-hmm. cleverly gave you yeah. times so you didn't miss anything, and sometimes I feel like they'll like rush through di- funny dialogue and you miss it if you're laughing. Yeah, so I thought it was cool. No, but I I think it was very well paced. I, besides mm-hmm. the start, the, yeah, the start was just I don't even know. If, 
I don't I, even want to say it's I liked, slow. I, I liked just, the very start. The yeah. very start, because it was very start, it's like super rushed and you're yeah. like, like panicking about like Spider-Man and stuff. I liked that scene. That mm-hmm. scene was really good. Um, and I was glad that they didn't like spend too much time on the court stuff. They literally just said, oh, hey, Matt Murdock figured it out because Matt, it's Matt Murdock. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like you get into just like them trying to figure out like college i guess Mm -hmm. it was just weird because they're go obviously going the college route but it spends a lot of time working on college but it doesn't go anywhere i mean obviously that's that's the crux how i feel yeah obviously that's the reason that spider-man that peter like wants to do the spell is because he wants to help them get uh into college even though because they haven't done anything but you spend a lot of time trying to get to college when you could have just instead of instead of it just being oh he missed out on like these backup colleges yeah you could have had it been i missed up on my all my like one line i missed out on all my backup colleges but at mit this is the one yeah and then you wouldn't have to do that whole like montage thing yeah yeah it just it wasn't even like like i still liked it because it's like i like the characters and it's fun to like watch them but I just think there was, like, there was just a tiny bit of pacing issues at the beginning where I was kind of, like, there was a second where I started to think, like, okay, okay when is the multiverse going to come into play? Yeah. Like, let's move it on. But only for a moment. No, but I liked I liked the rest of the film's pacing. I think it was paced really well. I agree. You want to talk about the ending, then? Yeah. Uh, so, I really like the ending of this because it essentially sets these three movies as an origin film. Mm-hmm. So, the ending, obviously, you've probably seen it. But Spider-Man lives with the fact that no one knows that he is Peter Parker. And I thought, I think that, I think the main thing that I took away from this and the main thing that I like is they allow Peter Parker to be mature now. Instead of him, I hope in the ne- other movies he's going to be more mature and he's going to lose that innocence factor that you were talking about because he's supposed to be mature now. And he makes a mature mis- decision by basically... I think it's very nice how they don't explain it because like there's like like in Spider-Man 1 the ending monologue where he's like I'm not going to tell Mary Jane that I'm Spider-Man because it's going to endanger her and stuff like that. Yeah. That's like a main thing. We don't need a narration. The fact that they he was just in there and he saw them too happy and in my MIT they were like he was like it's better for them that they don't know that I exist. And I think that is a very, very mature th- like story plot line for Spider-Man. But the thing that it does is it sets up the future that you can go anywhere now yeah. with Spider-Man. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that um, Tom's ho- Tom Holland's acting really, really shined through with just these last 15 minutes. I mean, it was that was really like super, super excellent. And you're right. I think that him overcompensating for the innocence maybe at the beginning of the movie was to make up for the fact that now he's been through stuff and has grown, like, he will be able to play a more mature Mm Spider-Man in the future. So that's a really good point. Um, I, for me, I fear that with this whole multiverse situation that every movie is just going to be an absolute craziness mess, a mass of multiverse and mirror universes and rocks flying, and I feel like I might get a little bit confused sometimes. I don't think that, though. Mm-hmm. Because we've already had multiverse stuff in Loki, and it just is just now getting it. We had Black Widow, Shang-Chi, and Eternals that did not have... Right. Um, uh, that did not have multiverse stuff. This is the first one that has multiverse stuff. But after this, we have Thor, Black Panther, Captain Marvel, and Fantastic Four, and other stuff. All of those have nothing to do with the multiverse. The oh, only, good. the okay. only we'll one, Doctor Strange. the only one is Doctor Strange. So like we're completely like, there's no more of this like multiverse stuff besides Doctor Strange, and that's the first movie next year. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Morbius. Oh wait, is that not count? Morbius is like Sony. It's more of but they're the morphing Venom. now. <laughs> yeah. So so the ending was great, but also after credit scene. Can you explain that to me just a bit? I want to make sure I understand. So uh, you saw yeah you saw Venom two. So yeah. if you haven't seen Venom two, so I guess the only thing I'm cl- I'm confused about is um so Tom Hardy got b- to another universe. He got blipped to another universe. Be- because if you remember the the explanation they give for people to coming in the universe is that is that is it's that everyone that knows that he that Peter Parker is Spider-Man 
And at the end of Venom 2, the after credit scene, it showed that Venom already knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man for right. some unknown reason. Right. And there's that little, like, weird, like, change thing mm-hmm. where he, like, almost gets transported to another universe. Mm-hmm. That's what was implied, that he was transported to the MCU. <gasps> Because remember, oh. he's in Hawaii. Yes. And, and then someone else walks out of the of the like restroom or whatever. So obviously he got transported to a different universe. He got transported to the MCU. That's why he's in Hawaii in the after credit scene. He's talking mm-hmm. to the Hawaiian dude. And so at the end of that, it's shown that the Venom actually left part of the symbiote there. So Venom's going to be in the MCU now. Okay. So that's what I thought. I was yeah. on the same page. Okay. Yeah. So, um... I'm wondering, is it the same Venom that Tom Har- that's with Tom Hardy, or will it be like a different Venom, like like a more evil Venom, like in Spider Man Three? You understand what I'm saying? Oh, um, I think okay. it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be like a villain Venom. That's what I think. Okay. Because Venom isn't of v- like the reason Venom isn't a villain in the Venom movies is just because there's bigger things to do. Mm-hmm. Whereas usually when it's Spider Man, Venom He's, has Venom hates Spider Man. Yeah. I don't remember like why, mm-hmm. but there's like reasons that Venom hates Spider Man. So Venom people will were, be a villain. I just seen a TikTok where people were saying that they think that that Venom symbiote is gonna um, go over the Flash. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know who else you would do. Yeah. And plus, now that MJ, Ned, and Flash are at MIT. So they're all at MIT. If Peter Parker also goes to MIT, you have the entire cast still there. But who's who's the Venom symbiote going to go on? Right. It can't go on. It's not going to go on MJ because they won't do that. Unless they want to try something oh, new. That'd be cool. Then, yeah. Because yeah, that would be cool because it would be good use of Zendaya because Zendaya yeah. is like, able to do that stuff. Um, I don't think they would put it on Ned because they, I think they want to make Ned Hobgoblin eventually maybe if they want to. So Flash is like the only person for them to do it. And I think they perfectly set that up as saying, hey, Flash is still in part of this. Yeah, they did. That's true. Because they still included Flash a lot in the first part. So mm-hmm. it's like they were like, Flash is still definitely a part of this, but... So I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, I am too. Um, I thought it was really, really good. Um, like I said, nine out of ten. Loved it. <laughs> yeah, I, mine's gonna be nine point five, just because I gotta put it above Shang Chi, and I rated Shang Chi a nine point five. <laughs> it's definitely the hype that it definitely and like uh, it lived up to the hype. i I'm very glad. I was very, I was very like nervous. This stuff was going to be, like, leaked as I was going in because you know how people can be, like, going out of the theater and talking. Oh, I know, I know. I had to go fill up my popcorn, like, uh, right before the trailers. And as I walked out, another theater had just let out. And there was people dressed as Spider-Man. Like, shut your eyes, shut so your ears. So I went back into the theater and waited until everyone had passed and then basically hummed to That's myself funny. when I went back to get a refill. That is so funny. Like, I literally just, like, kept my mind occupied. I was like, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. Because I was, I was going to be so mad. If some of them dude walked out like, man, that's... <laughs> I also... I know we talked about stuff that had previously been spoiled. I had been half spoiled for the Venom reveal. I knew uh... because I was playing um, games with my friends the other night. And the uh, one one guy was like making jokes because he was like... He didn't care about spoilers. So he was on YouTube looking at... Um, at, uh, like reviews from people who had already seen it. He was looking at clips because my friend, my friend TJ, had been spoiled because he oh. saw a clip. So he was th- my other friend was looking at clips, and then after he had viewed the clip, he was like, "Have you guys seen Venom?" And I immediately left the call, and ah. I was like, "Great!" I was like, "So Venom's in here, right?" Yeah. And so Venom was. I thought Venom was going to be in the movie. I was going to be like, "That would be very, very drastic if Venom yeah. just shows up." But I, but I was like, I was anticipating Venom at some point. Which, yeah. uh, the thing is, is that it's so weird because I usually hate spoilers, but these these spoilers did not like get me that mad. I think it was because it was so long ago. It was so far in the past. I think it was a month and a half, mm-hmm. and I was just like, okay. I and I already kind of expected it. Yeah, I was about to say. I think the spoilers like that I got or you got like were things that you were kind of already um, expecting anyway. Yeah, so I, I was I was pretty okay with being sp- spoiled. I just I'm glad I didn't get spoiled for plot. Yeah, I was about to say I would have been mad if I got spoiled about Tom like, Holland forgetting everything, or, or like Willem Dafoe like being the 
crux of the villains like turning like that he, he stuff. Was, i think that honestly i feel like green goblin i think he consistently is the best character in the um originals in the original spider-man i think he's the best part of it yeah like i don't think Sp- toby mcguire spider-man would have taken off as much if exactly. William Defoe, goblin, green goblin had not been in it i think that he his character and him and his actor is such a likable person and i think th- I just, I really loved him. I think that his performance, to be able to play to, like, multiple personalities. Yeah, um, it's so In such an effective way, because if he acts like it, he, like, seems like an evil dude. But, like, he also, like, genuinely portrays, like, a really kind-hearted person. Mm -hmm. So, it's really cool. I was kind of hoping James Franco would show up um, a little bit. That would have been cool. Or is it David? I don't remember. Uh, James. I'm pretty sure it's James. Yeah, I think it's James. I think that would have been kind of cool. That would have been fun um i know i think they're trying to the thing is is that i think they purposely stayed away from hobgoblin stuff if they want to make ned hobgoblin in the future wait do you think ned will be anti-peter park anti spider-man i don't know he doesn't know peter parker i don't know why would he not be so in in a lot of stories ned becomes hobgoblin and so i think because um me and my dad were taught our dad was talking about this we were saying uh, if they did a Sinister Six, who would be in it? Because and then he was like, "Well, you could just have the MCU version of Doc Ock or the MCU version of Green Goblin." And then I was like, "Yeah, but that'd be lame mm-hmm. because Tom Holland has already fought them. Tom Hardy, H- Holland already knows like how they fight, and it, you you would basically be rehashing stuff you've yeah. already seen." But they why'd they leave ho- all both Hobgoblins out? Because mm. there's a Hobgoblin in Sam Raimi and in Andrew Garfield good point so everyone's like or I, at least i was like maybe they're waiting because they want to make actually make ned hobgoblin so i was like okay i was i was i was wondering that but no i think james franco would have been cool doc ock was the other person that i was very pleased with um yeah. of I was, course he's from spider-man 2 right yes. and, and that's a lot like, of people consider that like the best spider-man movie a lot of people consider that the best superhero movie mm-hmm. of all time so a lot of people love that mm-hmm. movie um the other one that I was most excited for was Sandman because I love the character yeah, of Sandman. Mm-hmm. Sandman's character arc in Spider-Man Three is yeah, perfect. I remember like yeah, and they they I think they used him well. Yeah, I also was surprised. Sorry, this is like the th- thing that surprised me most about the plot was that it wasn't like Electro, Lizard, and Sandman all fighting for the same reason. That was actually made it really interesting, though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm glad it made sense for them not to fight each other during the scene, but I liked how they were like, oh, Sandman just wants to get home to his family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Lizard's just like, well, you can't cure me because I couldn't cure me. Yeah. And so he's like fighting off Spider-Man to stop him from curing him. And Mm -hmm. so the way that they had these three villains have different motives, but also still fight at the same time was incredible. It was so cool to me that I'm, I'm just, I was just glad that they kept all their motives from the movies. They didn't just be like, oh, here's a new motive. Like, yeah, 100%. I liked all that. I agree. Um, I hope Tobey Maguire lives after his stabbing. <laughs> yeah, what, uh, so are we, getting, are we getting another Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire movie where the villains survive? That would be fun. Oh, my God. But, yeah, but then soon they'll be getting old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously. It's it's not looking good for some of our Spider-Men. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, I, I, I was just excited. I'm excited for more Spider-Man. It was a lot of fun. I think they could, should have had Miles Morales from the cartoon I show do. up. I do. But that would have been so hard. And that would have been. How do you do that? That would just be, like, impossible. Yeah, exactly. How do you have an animated person show up when it's, like, you designed the person like because you wanted uh, miles to look a certain way and you have a different person show up like i don't know who how the voice actor of miles looks like what he looks like but like i think it would have been cool to have the animated version show up i mean it's a multiverse the possibilities are endless who's to say one of the ver- universes is not animated i mean oh, I'm good point is it mary poppins i mean if what <laughs> walt disney can figure this <laughs> if they can do it everyone can no, but yeah, I think it was a lot of fun. It was super fun to see it in theaters with the big crowd. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll- definitely go see it in theaters. Um, one final thing before we call it a day, or call it, call it a wrap. We're going to, not necessarily, I'm just making a joke, but we can end how we started with another trailer. The I second, <laughs> second post credit scene That's is a trailer true. from Multiverse of Madness. 
I'm so excited for that movie just because I loved WandaVision and I love Scarlet Witch. And I also like Doctor Strange more now. He's way more compelling than he was in his first movie. For sure. So I'm just excited for that. I'm definitely going to have to watch WandaVision now. You will also have to watch What If. You know, everyone was... I saw a TikTok today that said, you shouldn't see Spider-Man No Way Home without watching um, What If. And everyone said that's not true. But um, it's not true. I mean, it's not like you already like you aren't gonna get spoiled for what if you already know like right like, yeah it's but a, you i guess it help explain the multiverse stuff yeah but yeah, yeah I, I that's my goal i think um for, like this winter is to watch all of the marvel shows yeah. hawkeye is really good it's episode we're on episode five right now episode six is the last episode it's coming out wednesday mm-hmm. hawkeye is the best marvel show really yeah because it was what, a nice love- time film yeah no she's amazing are you sure i am are you sure i am i'm 100 percent sure okay. no she's really good in this one i know i usually don't like Haley steinfeld steinfeld i didn't like her in pitch perfect and i didn't really care for her in bumblebee but she's yeah. really good in this one she's really really like um charismatic and like just has fun oh good she definitely fits into marvel okay good i think um i think her fault is that they her first introduction really to acting was um pitch perfect and she played the most annoying character in the entire universe so i think that i think that they, they, they that's they set her up for failure yeah, yeah. they doomed her <laughs> okay but, i'm gonna watch those more we'll no. report back yes definitely watch those all right guys so that will do it right yep well i think that's it so we okay. will um <laughs> you're like hmm, anything you, else? you had a look on your face oh, no. i was just thinking that maybe we should film like a christmas movie special but every time i say like this is the next episode it's not true so i'm just gonna <laughs> stop committing us to stuff <laughs> but uh, yeah i have no idea what the next movie we're watching is actually i don't i don't want to be i don't want to watch matrix that much but maybe honest because we have to watch all the other mix- ma- matrixes mm-hmm. and that's when's oscar announcements oscar announcements should be soon ish yeah i think like jan the first week of january the oscar announcements come so maybe when is oscars usually in february okay hopefully it's before february 17. i was about to say so if, if we can at least watch the movies before february then like we could just do it remotely while yeah. you're in florida yeah 100 percent. so no thank you guys for listening and stay tuned for whatever our next episode will be because tbd have, i'm not committing anymore <laughs> we have no idea all right thanks guys um like us on uh, follow us on instagram um like us on go to social media um make sure you subscribe to all of our podcasts on whatever channel you get your podcast from and give us a five-star rating thank you bye (laughs) goodbye